Special equipment has been brought in so crews can keep working. They're essentially removing just a few handfuls worth of rubble at a time. People in this neighborhood say they'll be hugging their loved ones a little tighter tonight after that shootout left a man shot in plain sight near a busy intersection. It also came with updates to the intersection where that accident happened. That includes updated lighting and this crosswalk you see right here. Good morning, Kylie. Can you tell this is my first time at the Strawberry Festival? Am I giving you guys any hints? <laughs> it's my first time. We watched tonight as at least 20 kids rolled their scooters up and down these sidewalks at the same intersection where a shooting happened just hours ago. But can you explain the importance of what's behind this fence when it comes to your students and what you guys do? No. If the names alone don't make you want to eat, yeah. I can report the food is good. It is. Very good, y'all. And even after our own interview, Randy called us to tell us that the local league will now allow Cameron to play in a playoff game without any restrictions. Police say at this scene, two people were shot, but as you guys said earlier, they don't know if these are two separate shootings or if these people were shot by the same person. I spent time making calls, emailing, and looking through years worth of medical records. And in the end, it seems this woman's care was cut off due to a miscommunication between her doctor and her insurance provider. Lynn Hunt says over the years, she's needed to get her blood drawn a lot. Because I have a um, problem with my lungs. I also am a type 1 diabetic. I also have fibromyalgia. But for Hunt, traditional methods don't work. It feels like fire. It always burns. The veins collapse and then this, even the saline burns. And after years of painful experiences, about five years ago, she had a medical port implanted. It's right here. It's right there. To help make things easier. Medical documents show that since then, she's been having a home health nurse come out to help manage the many medications she takes and flush out her port. And most recently, that care has come from Advent Health Home Care, West Florida. It has to be by a skilled nurse, which my doctor wrote that on many letters. Um, someone who's not skilled cannot do a port. And if you don't flush it every month, it can get clogged and, or it can get an infection, which could potentially kill me. But late last year, Hunt says her monthly services were canceled and she wasn't sure why. I'm really not very happy about it because how would they like to be in my shoes? She's appealed that decision twice, but her services weren't restored. And in January, she contacted ABC Action News. Since then, I've combed through a year's worth of medical documents for Ms. Hunt. I've also spoken to her insurance provider and to Advent Health to better understand what happened. Client notes from Hunt's last appointment in November show that her former nurse put in a call to Humana to request that a case manager look into why she was being discharged from the program. A note from one month later on December 3rd shows that a rep from Advent Health called Humana again to explain that Hunt had ongoing needs for her port and that they were no longer covered by Humana. Another note dated two days later shows that Hunt's nurse encouraged her to appeal that decision. Well, she did, and in December, Humana issued this explanation of non-coverage. It says that skilled nursing services would only be covered if they were needed to maintain a patient's current condition or keep them from getting worse. It also says that Hunt has a long-standing condition that no longer requires monitoring, and it goes on to say that her port has hasn't been used in years and no longer needed to be flushed out. But Hunt says her port has been used and often. All it ever did was got flushed from, from the nurse. And, and he drew my blood. More recently, in February, Hunt's doctors issued two notes calling for her to have her blood drawn and for her port to be flushed monthly. And both listed home health care as the means to get this done. In March, Hunt's doctor also issued another note saying home health care would be required indefinitely. But so far, Hunt's services still haven't been reinstated. Well, I'll just tell you like this, I just feel like Nobody really cares what happens to people.
anymore. Earlier this week, I contacted Advent Health for more information, and in a statement, they told me they didn't have the authority to reinstate services. They also told me that Ms. Hunt would have to work with her doctor and Humana to requalify for the services. So on Wednesday, I contacted Humana because Ms. Hunt does have a doctor's note, and she also won a second appeal of her case earlier this month. And in a statement, they told me they work diligently to resolve issues for their members and they added that they are committed to providing their members with access to high-quality health care, including in their homes. Ms. Hunt says she's also gotten a call from Humana with a promise that they would look into the issue, but she still doesn't know where this leaves her. In the studio, Rochelle Aline, ABC Action News. Lynn Hunt tells us she's grateful to have a new nurse to help her out with her medical needs again, but she also says there's still some questions surrounding the miscommunication that put her in this position in the first place. On a Friday afternoon... Oh, victory is mine, victory is mine, victory today... Lynn Hunt has a song in her heart. Oh, I and after the last seven months, her joy is understandable. We first introduced her a few weeks ago. I'm really not very happy about it because how would they like to be in my shoes? When she was still struggling to get someone to flush out the medical port she has in her chest. It has to be by a skilled nurse, which my doctor wrote that on many letters. Um, someone who's not skilled cannot do a port. And if you don't flush it every month, it can get clogged or it can get an infection, which could potentially kill me. She'd been getting that service from an Advent Health home care nurse for the last five years, but then late last year, her services were canceled. We did some digging through her medical records and found that an apparent miscommunication between her provider and her health insurance led to that cancellation. And since our first story aired, Hunt says she's heard from a Humana case manager. She kept calling me back. Finally, she called me back and said, we got somebody who will do your port. And she had her first appointment with that new home health care provider today. The nurse came out and she did the assessment, all that stuff. And so officially today I'm in. It's a victory that Hunt says wouldn't have come without speaking up. No matter what your status in life, you've got to be your own advocate. Don't let people tell you no. And don't be afraid to speak out. Then I started shouting victory. Lynn also tells me she still hasn't gotten a clear answer as to why her services with Advent Health were canceled in the first place. And she says she's going to keep pushing for an explanation. When it comes to Florida's recently updated elections law, the Pinellas County Commission says the state of Florida isn't playing fair. Their concerns all come down to about two paragraphs worth of text that essentially say county commissioners in single member districts will have to run again for their seats after a redistricting happens. This new provision also contains exceptions for Miami-Dade County, counties that don't have a charter, and those with no commission term limits. And when you factor those in, as of now, Pinellas County is the only county that's impacted. I sat down with Pinellas County Commissioner Janet Long and asked her about this. Does that feel targeted? When, that, when you have something that only impacts one county, that's why you file it as a local bill because there are other requirements that kick in. You must have two public hearings in the county and then it goes through a different pr process within the Florida legislature and the Florida Senate. And so clearly, Yes, that's a very loaded question. It absolutely feels targeted. Pinellas County finished its redistricting process in December, and as the elections administration law stands right now, it would mean that County Commissioners Renee Flowers in District 7 and Karen Seal in District 5 would have to run for their seats again, despite them both having two years left on their current terms. And it passes 4-2. to two. Some members of the commission feel so strongly about this that they voted in late April to file this lawsuit against the Attorney General and Secretary of State asking for a temporary injunction to the law. 
The suit claims that the changes are illegal because they don't apply across the board to the entire state. It also says that it's unlikely that the law would impact any other counties in the future. My name is Pamela C. I spoke to Florida Gulf Coast University law professor Pamela C. about the suit. And while she says the Pinellas County Commission may have a point. There is a, a, a general indication that it may have been targeted. She also says that a lot can happen between between now and the next redistricting process. There's redistricting that will occur every 10 years. So it's very possible that other counties will be impacted at another time. So that's something you do need to pay attention to. And she adds that legally there is good reason to seek a new election after redistricting. Many things can happen, many things can change, and a lot of things that are very important to the people that live in these districts can be changed by people that they never voted for. One of the candidates now up for one of the seats is State Representative Chris Latvala, who has filed to run for the Pinellas County Commission District 5 seat. Latvala did not sponsor the bill that opened up these seats, but he did vote for it when it hit the House floor. I reached out to him for comment and he sent a statement saying in part, quote, it is the height of arrogance for the Pinellas County Commission to use tax dollars to sue the state to try to avoid running for re-election when some of their single member districts added 16,000 residents that never had the opportunity to vote for them. Multiple counties have a policy to make their single member county commissioners run for re-election during a redistricting year. He'll Hillsborough being one. The entire state Senate also runs for re-election during redistricting. Pinellas wants special treatment and they are using tax dollars to fight to not have to run and thus they are denying our residents their right to choose. End quote. I'm a USF uh, distinguished professor emerita. I spoke to ABC Action News political analyst Dr. Susan McManus about this. She says the concept of a termed out rep running for lower office isn't unusual. It's not uncommon and then if they get termed out locally, if there are term limits, then it's not uncommon for them to go back to Tallahassee. But she also adds that it's not uncommon for people to look for deeper political meaning behind certain things like this new law, especially right now. In an election year, there are people always looking for the political motive in just about anything that any public official does. Election year politics is very different from non-election year politics. In the end, Commissioner Long says the county will continue to fight the law. If the legislature would stop preempting all of our authority, well then, you know, that would be the solution. There's also concern about the timing of this bill and what the lawsuit means for elections. The qualifying period for this year's general election is next month and the primary is in August. So the fear is that sitting commissioners who have to run again won't have much time to decide if they want to run or to campaign if they do go through with an election. At this point, Commissioner Renee Flowers has filed for re-election and is currently unopposed, but Commissioner Seal has not filed. Latvala is currently running unopposed for her seat and has raised more than $100,000 for his campaign. In the studio, Rochelle Aline, ABC Action News.